Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we're gonna talk about parallel processing and how to do different types of routing inside Studio One. When we talk about parallel processing, we're talking about taking a copy of one signal and duplicating it to affect it in a different way. Maybe adding some distortion, some parallel compression, which you may have heard of and used before, but there's different ways to do it inside Studio One. Let's take a dive into the DAW and look at the different ways to do the routing to perform your parallel processing. Here's a session of something I've been messing around with, and it's really easy. It's drums in light blue, bass guitar in this darker blue, and electric guitar in this green. That's it, drums, bass, guitar. Let's take a listen to what I have going on so far, and let's do some parallel processing to some of the elements to maybe add some more life. Here's a session of something easy that I've been toying around with. I have MIDI drums in light blue, an electric bass guitar in dark blue, an electric guitar in green. Let's take a listen to the raw tracks without any processing going on. So there it is, pretty straightforward, kind of your typical rock song. But let's do some parallel processing to our drums. I wanna add some more snap to my snare drum. So what we can do is some parallel processing on the snare. The way I have it routed right now is I have my snare track right here and I have a send to an effects channel over here. On the effects channel, I have an instance of fat channel with the fat compressor and I did some settings that I thought would really bring out some snap in that snare drum. All buttons in, fastest attack, fastest release, and I adjusted the input and output to get the right amount of compression and to kind of balance out the sound. On my snare track, I created a send to the effects channel and I made sure that it was at zero dB because I wanted the exact amount of snare that's in my mix going to my parallel channel. Right now, I have the parallel channel muted and what we're gonna do is we're gonna unmute and bring the fader all the way down. What I'll do is I'll hit play and slowly bring the fader up. And you should start hearing some extra snap being added to the snare because of the compression settings that I have. The fastest attack and fastest release really brings out that snap. This is sometimes referred to as New York style compression, but really it's just parallel processing. A lot of compression at the fastest attack and fastest release brings a lot of snap to your drums. You can really hear when the channel is unmuted and brought into taste, it really adds some extra snap to the top end of that snare drum. This is parallel processing and one way to do the routing of it. All you do is create an effects channel or a bus and send an exact copy of whatever you want to the bus and then apply your processing to that bus and blend them together. Another way to do some parallel processing is actually right on the channel itself. Right here is my bass guitar, and you may have noticed before an instance of the Red Light District Distortion plugin. Right now, the plugin is in bypass, and we're just hearing my DI bass. But because this is more of a rock song, I kinda want some grit and edge to that bass to help it blend into the electric guitar some more. What I would like to do is perform some parallel processing on the bass to not affect the real lows of the bass, kind of everything below 200 hertz, and we'll stick with that. But I would like to do some saturation on everything above 200 hertz. If you look right here, you'll see this button, and this is the in-channel routing button. When you click on it, you can see that the signal would go from top to bottom and it would pass right through our plugin if it was left alone. But like we said, we wanna do some parallel processing. 
what we can do is add a splitter. A splitter will do exactly like it says and create two copies within the one track of the signal. You can see our distortion plugin is still before the splitter, but what we can do is now take this and drag it to a separate channel. So now the splitter is in line first. A clean copy of the DI will come out this channel and blend into the bottom. But on the other side of the splitter, the signal will go into our distortion and then blend in with the original. What we can also do is access the splitter itself and change its mode. Normal is at a full spectrum exact copy of your signal from one side to the other. Channel split will split the left and the right, so you can do different processing on a stereo signal and do different things on the left channel versus the right channel. But what we're going to do is the frequency split. And in here, this creates a crossover within the splitter. And you can set the frequency with this bar here or just by typing it in. I think before we said 200 hertz, so we're gonna put that in. Now that we've put in 200 hertz, we can take a listen to just what's gonna go through this channel of the splitter by muting the first channel. This will mute and create that break. So now if we solo the bass and hit play, you can hear that it's filtering off everything below 200 hertz. If we go back to normal, it's full spectrum. So let's go back to frequency split. And now we know that it's rolling off everything below 200. Now we can go back into our saturation, engage it, and we know that everything hitting this plugin is 200 hertz or higher. We are now doing parallel processing. We still have the first channel muted, but let's take a listen and get some settings of everything above 200 and do some saturation on it. I think that's pretty good right there. Now let's blend it back in. We go back to the router, unmute the original channel, and we can start to do our blend right here within the channel. You have two options to do. You have your levels sliders right here, like we did with the frequency, or you also have faders right here. I can simply click and hold and drag this fader down. Now what we can do is hit play and do our processing and blending right in this one channel. That sounds pretty good in solo. Let's hear how it sounds in the mix. Using the splitter in the routing of the channel gives you lots of options. One splitter will actually let you go up to five different splits and you can mute each one individually. That's a couple different ways to do your parallel process routing inside Studio One with the same method you could use in any other DAW by creating a bus or effects channel, or inside Studio One, you can use the router and a splitter to create that parallel processing right on one channel. That's all for now. If you found this video informative, please like and share the video. And if you have any questions, please ask them in a comment and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.